Hello, Ronald and Merrill. How are you guys today? Hello. Good. How are you? I I'm great. Good. I'm great. Thank you so much. I love this is like, seriously, my favorite series. So I'm always chomping when I can get it at new season. Um, Merrill, let's start with you because what I love so much about this show um, is that like, you can just get a little bit more, you know, into the alt history. So I wanted to ask you, when you are creating, when you're working on this series and you, you know, you're taking us to Mars, you're, you know, things that are going on in Russia, how do you do that so it's believable to us viewers so that we're not sitting there rolling our eyes going, nah, that could never happen. But I truly believe, it. I truly believe it as a fan. Yeah, I think since the beginning, and I know when when we sat down and, and Ron, Matt and Ben were creating this series, it was so important to us that this world is tethered somehow to our current reality, that it's a recognizable world, but whether that be political touch points or something happening um, in the entertainment zeitgeist, whatever it may be, that that we can recognize our world and and have a touchdown, touchstone as we go. It makes it much more believable. If you go, oh, wait, and sometimes we love the, we love the idea of people wondering if the history we're telling is a real one, and then them having to go to, you know, um, time hop or one of our extra things that we put up to be like, okay, what was the real history or, or or what really happened and researching that more. I think that is one of the amazing benefits that, that's come out of the series. Yeah, hundred percent. And, and Ronald, I, you know, I wanted to know over the years, like how much more um, difficult, challenging does it get to create these worlds and you're, you know, dealing with the visual effects and, and all that kind of stuff. Does it get easier or is it more challenging with each season? Um, it's, it is a little more challenging each season because, you know, each season on a show like this, you're moving further into a, a future that we're creating that doesn't exist. First couple of years, even though the history was changing radically, we were still, you know, dealing with uh, technology that was very familiar to the audience. We were just kind of moving it ahead a little bit. So you still had like things like the space shuttle and the Saturn V to kind of right. deal with. But at this point in the show, now that's all gone and we're, we're dealing with, you know, spacecraft and technology is, is completely of our cre own creation. And we've decided to do things like accelerate the development of the internet. Well, what does that mean? You know, how would that affect the world, you know, if, if the internet moved it at a faster pace? And uh, Martian base is obviously something that hasn't been done in real life. Okay, we know there are plans for Martian bases. There's lots of ideas about what they're going to be. How can we create that? And how can we do it on a television budget? So it does become more challenging. It's the same challenge each year, but it, it just becomes a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger and more complex the further we, we go. Absolutely. And Meryl, you know, we, we meet some new people this season, which I love. I love the addition of Toby Cabell. Oh my God. So he's so good in this, you know, when, when you're bringing in new actors, do they have to get into the mindset of what it might be to be in space? Because you've got the pros like Joel and, and Ren and all these others who've had that, you know, feeling already. How do the new actors adapt to this? Well, I think for all our actors since season one, we've had the benefit of having um, Garrett Reisman, who was a former astronaut as a consultant on the series. And he does kind of a, not a boot camp, but kind of a little round table discussion with all of them and um, talks about what it's like up there, answers questions, you know, he's always available to them. So I think that's so great for all of the actors coming in. So they have someone who's actually lived this life um, that they can refer to and, and, start to internalize all of his information. Yeah, and Ronald, just to, to wrap it up, one of the themes that I was really getting uh, from season four is greed. Do you want to discuss that a little bit? <laughs> is what? Greed, greed. where greed comes in. And oh, greed, I wasn't sure if you said- very uh, greedy yeah. people here. We have some very greedy people. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's part of the, of the human condition too, you know, and it seemed like right that at this point in the story, as we started to reach out to, to space more more aggressively than happened in real life. All right, now, it's, well, what are we doing there? You know, who's making money from this? How is this going to sustain itself? These are incredibly costly, you know, endeavors to, to do sure. a Martian base is literally billions of dollars. Well, there has to be a return on investment at some point. And the introduction of private enterprise into the equation last season with Helios was a great yeah. entree into that world. And so it felt right that we should start talking about how that was going to function, how the, how market forces were going to start coming into play, you know, into into space exploration and colonization. And it's it just provides a whole new era of conflict and drama uh, for the series. 
Absolutely. Well, it's, uh, it was, it's amazing. I can't wait to get my last three episodes. And I really just personally want to thank you both for your time today. And this fabulous, fabulous series. I just can't stop talking about it. It's so great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank okay. you.